This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by HostGator. On today's Destructoid show, Assassin's Creed 3 is getting a gameplay trailer later this week, probably. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is beyond this console generation, and could Ubisoft be working on an Avengers game? Destructoid Assemble! Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scogel. Happy Mind Day, Max. Oh, because of the Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> I stole your joke. No yeah, I, I, no do shame. you like my shirt? I do. It's colorful. Yeah, we had some Star Wars news, sort of, but I didn't. We didn't really have a place to put it. But That's maybe okay. some other day. Um, are you guys excited about Assassin's Creed? I don't know if you actually answered me, but the correct <laughs> answer was was yes, be, because I'm going to tell you about Assassin's Creed now. For starters, we've got a super kick-ass new trailer. It's, it's pretty short, but it's definitely fun to look at. We get to see the, uh, the new game's hero, Connor, doing his little parkour bit through the trees, and after uh, he's after this red coat fellow, this, this British man, and then he takes a bow and arrow and he, he shoots him in the leg. If you make the arrow to the knee joke, I will just end you. I will not have it. Anyway, then he goes in for the kill, and before we see anything really cool, uh, we, are, we are told that we should, we should unite. Uh, and go to this website to unlock the gameplay trailer. Yeah, I so unite. yeah, we have to unite by going to assassinscreed.com/unite, which is the Assassin's Creed Facebook page, and they've got a progress bar that's counting up to, get this, one million seven hundred and seventy-six thousand Facebook posts and Twitter shares and stupid emails you send to your relatives. Um, of course, uh, over on the the teaser's YouTube page, commenter Bearmeister Master has already made this startling discovery. Hey, did anyone search what happened in 1776? According to that, we must get 1,776,000 posts of this video. Just Google it. I find the most interesting fact was that the Order of the Illuminati was found that year. Yeah, that's that's true. According to Wikipedia, the Bavarian, the, the Bavarian Illuminati was founded. But I, I think that maybe, maybe just possibly, this is more to do with the American Revolution and the, the whole signing of that Declaration of Independence thing that happened on, you know, July Fourth, nineteen seven, there's seventeen seventy six. That was, you know, it's it's. They made a movie about it, 1776. It had Mr. Feeny in it from Boy World. He played John Adams. I own um, that shit on DVD. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure that Assassin's Creed is going to have lots of sneaky secret stuff with Templars and Assassins, but I have a feeling the significance here is the whole American Revolution thing. Anyway, in addition to this um, very exciting new trailer and this slightly less exciting new Facebook page, Ubisoft did drop a whole mess of great Assassin's Creed concept art dating back as far as 2004. And uh, considering the first game came out in 2007, that's that's kind of cool. And one of the pics even shows a female assassin. How crazy is that? Look at her. She's a lady with knives. Ooh. Even crazier, a concept video turned up which shows some rather familiar looking gameplay, but which oddly enough refers to Assassin's Creed as Prince of Persia Assassins. Also, there's some co-op in there too. Yeah. They jump on a horse together and ride off into the sunset. Uh, but yeah, so what do you know? Assassin's Creed was apparently originally a Prince of Persia spinoff? Who knew? The internet, I guess. So anyway, um, if you really want to see some Assassin's Creed 3 gameplay, you know, that that's the new one that wasn't a concept video from mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, just go, the, it's the Facebook, you know. I'm so sick of companies making yeah. us go to Facebook pages to like shit, and then we get to unlock something that they would have released in like a day anyway. Yeah. I'm sick of all the teasing, Max. It's I'm like, sick of it's teasing. It's like, advertise this to your relatives and friends on Facebook so that we can show you further advertisement. It's like, like a mini man. Facebook game in and of itself when you think about it. I don't, I don't like it, Ubisoft. Uh, you tease anyway. Me and I feel dirty. So much teasing. Yeah. Look, great. A story about teasing oh, again. More teasing. Oh, Michel no. Michel Ansel. Do you guys know him? He created Rayman. He also did Beyond Good and Evil. He's been dangling Beyond Good and Evil 2 in front of our faces for years now. And, well, I'm afraid I've got some bad news, guys. And some good news. Let's start with the good news Beyond Good and Evil 2 is definitely in production. Now the bad news, it won't be coming to 360 or PS3. And let's loop back around to the good news. It will, however, be coming to next-gen consoles. Terrific. According to a French interview with Samuel Perez, Michel Ancel claims that the game is still in its active creation stage. He said, quote, I can say that it's a very ambitious game and we need some tech to achieve that ambition. We focus on the game, we create it first, then we'll see what can run it. 
When asked about a release window of 2013 to coincide with the release of Microsoft's and possibly PlayStation's new console, he said, quote, We don't say 2013 because we don't know when it will come. We're working to create a great game and it needs more tech. So basically what he's saying is it's too early to tell and stop asking and it'll probably come in like five years, oh, is what I'm guessing. That's so exciting when they don't tell us that a game is coming out soon. Yeah, this one they've been teasing us for years now, but actually what's funny is that Ubisoft said back right before Rayman Origins came out That's that the right. sales of that game were going to affect the they development just, they took of Rayman Beyond Good and Evil like, 2. Yeah, buy his and game. then they released it the same week as Modern Warfare and all these other huge games, yeah. and then they were like, good luck, man. And they were like, oh, hey, wait. Don't drown out People there. People actually bought Rayman Origins? Go yeah. figure. And now they're working on a sequel for that. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's all business. It's all money. Big business. Uh, the no. big business. This weekend was the event Avengers, which broke every single box office record and seemed to win over audiences and critics alike, and it's also made Joss Whedon the proud owner of his own fucking country. That's true. Uh, and as with any massive budget summer blockbuster movie, The Avengers has been accompanied by a great deluge of product tie-ins and merchandising, but strangely absent has been any kind of proper official of Avengers video game. However, that might change soon if the internet is any indication. Mm. Uh, the domain name AvengersBattleForEarth.com just got registered, and after a quick backtrace by the cyber police, it's revealed to be officially owned by Marvel.com. More interestingly enough, um, if you visit the actual website, it goes to Ubisoft's website, Woo! and there's nothing there. So there's, there's that. What does it mean? Well, uh, the chances of it being a proper movie tie-in are probably just as good as it being another stupid, garbagey Facebook or mobile game. Uh, what was worth noting is that there was an Avengers game in the works by THQ Australia. It was canceled, but there is a video floating around with some weird pre-alpha footage that, uh, yeah, it's first person. And you're first person Iron Man and uh, blowing stuff up, and also first person Hulk which is sort of a weird, uh, I don't think they've ever done any games like that. It's a first person puncher uh, oh. and doing some clapping and uh, you know finishing moves. Uh, and also there's some various flavors of, of super scrolls flying around, uh, you know, using X-Men and Fantastic Four powers. But uh, you know, like most of the Western world, I, I saw Avengers this weekend. I thought it was definitely worth the price of admission. Uh, and I would be totally down to see like a good Avengers game that wasn't just like a crappy movie yeah. tie-in. I mean, like, Arkham City, but but with Marvel right. character. I really wish they could Marvel could figure that out how to make a really good video yeah, game. Yeah, not but, corny and crappy. I mean, it's it's possible to make a good a good superhero video totally. game based on a comic. You can take some liberties, and the comic nerds aren't, aren't going to get too mad, and the gamers still like it. It's yeah. just just for the love of God, please, no more just stupid movie tie-ins. Like just. Comics are better than that. Games are better than that. So you're saying what you want is a television tie-in, huh? Because uh, I got one for ya, uh, yeah. If last month's South Park, you guys remember that? South Park Tenorman's Revenge? Oh, yeah. God, don't remind me of that, please. Yeah, please just forget about that before I tell you that there is now a Family Guy video game. Apparently it's coming out now. A couple days after a mysterious Amazon listing popped up, Activision confirmed that they've entered into a deal with Fox to create Family Guy Back to the Multiverse, which is a game that's inspired by the season 8 premiere episode Road to the Multiverse, in which Stewie and Brian find a remote control that magically transports them through various parallel universes. I actually haven't seen it in a while, though I am a decent Family Guy fan, so um, seems like a decent enough setup for a game, and supposedly it's going to feature the voices and writers from the show, so I am keeping a cautiously optimistic eye out for this one. Activision unfortunately still has not confirmed any platforms for the release yet, but it's looking like fall 2012. If I had to guess, I would say that this is a downloadable title, but oh that's pure speculation. It sounds speculation. like an extremely novel t uh, premise for a game, traveling through dimensions. Yeah, but like so it's kind of like Tenorman's Revenge crappy... or Virtual Bart. Just, uh... Okay, it's better than Tenorman's Revenge. I'm um, calling it right now. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. In the meantime, let's take a word from our sponsor, let's shall do we? That. Host Gator can get your blog or website up and running in minutes. With plans starting at less than $4 a month, you can get 24/7 support and access to website building tools with over 4,000 templates. They will even migrate your current site for free. HostGator servers are 130% powered by wind energy, not to mention they offer unlimited disk space and bandwidth, a 45-day money-back guarantee, and a $100 Google AdWords credit to market your site. For a Vision 3 viewers, HostGator is offering 25% off your order or your first month free. Just go to HostGator.com and enter the code DESTRUCTOID at checkout.
Go do that. It helps us make our show. Yes. Speaking of show, back to show. Um, big release this week, obviously, Minecraft on Xbox. Did we draw something for that? No, this is I drew unrelated. Four. Okay, wonderful. Um, I'm not going to bother explaining to you guys what Minecraft is all about since I'm sure 99% of you already know. But if you do want a short breakdown, then you should check out our review that we put up on Rev3 Games like just now. If it's not up yet, I promise it will be like within the hour. Anthony and I both played uh, through the game this weekend, and though we hadn't touched the PC version in well over a year, I think we were surprised at how easy the Xbox One made it to get sucked back into that world of tiny blocks and cute pigs. Uh, for the most part, it's very similar to the PC version with a few notable additions. Uh, there's now a tutorial and a built-in recipe and crafting system, uh, both of which make the game way more accessible to newcomers, which I can't fault it for. Unfortunately, the restrictions brought forth by Microsoft and Xbox infringe on a lot of the things that made Minecraft so special to begin with. Uh, things like community modding, playing in massive worlds with hundreds of other people, even online play with just one of your friends is kind of deceptive when you realize that they're playing on your save file and not on a centralized server. That said, anyone looking to try out the single player or local co-op Minecraft experience would do well to give the Xbox version a shot. I really enjoyed my time with it despite its technical limitations and I'd recommend it to both newcomers and veterans who maybe just want to sit on the couch while they play Minecraft. Like, is that so wrong? Can people just sit on the couch no blocks and on the play couch. a game anymore? No cubes on the couch. No cubes on the couch. What do you think about this? What's your take? I know you're not a huge Minecraft person. Uh, but... I was just sort of curious. Um... It, I just don't. I don't do a lot of PC gaming because I don't have a surface, and mm -hmm. so the, the presence of a, of a couch version of Minecraft is curious. But mm -hmm. it, it sounds like the, a lot of the a lot of the stuff that people have built their hype around is, is sort of not there. So. I'm yeah. curious, I guess. It, it is, I, I want to say, for a mostly different audience. But if you're really into the PC version and you're not one of those hardcore people who like needs all these crazy texture packs and shit, like, you'll totally enjoy it. Um, we, we took some questions from Twitter right before we filmed this episode, so I'm just going to answer them. Adam V asked, if we bought Minecraft when it was in alpha, do we get it for XBLA for free, and will it support mods? Ooh. The answers to that are no and no. Sorry, Xbox just cannot support mods like the PC version can. Um, and as far as I know, they have not announced any deal about PC, Xbox tie-in price-wise. Really um, Luke 3, what were you going to say? I doubt that's it. That's yeah. just, I was like, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's Wishful on thinking. Xbox Wishful now. Wishful thinking. <laughs> uh, Luke 3 asked on Twitter, how will the in-game crafting wiki work? So basically, uh, when you enter crafting, a little screen pops up and it already has the objects that you need in place on the grid. Um, so you don't have to place them in a certain spot to make something. Um, and it'll show recipes. It'll show a list of each thing that you can create and it'll show you whether or not you have the items you created. And then if you do, it's a one-click press. It's really super simple, guys. Can't, I can't overstate it enough. Uh, Fabian BK asked, how are the controls? Is it hard to play with an Xbox 360 controller? It takes an hour or two to getting used to, um, but apart from that, it's it's really quite easy. There are enough buttons on the controller that you can do pretty much anything I, with each I one. I picked it up when you weren't looking, and I was like, you know, it, you? it, it you plays. I, my I, I might have ruined your game a little bit. But you might want to wash your hands just. Put that um, out but there. yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it plays like any first-person game that they throw yeah. on. Yeah. Controller, so um, I'm not going to say it's as easy to control <laughs> as the PC version. Obviously, you know, having WASD and your space bar there to jump is easier. Um, and the crafting interface, it's got pluses and minuses it so, it in like terms a, of usability. It, it sounds like crafting in an RPG, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like Skyrim, just press Y to craft or whatever. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. Okay. Can you craft a, a house? Like, can you just go in and no, just. No, there's can no you just be like, recipe for a house. Minecraft, make me a castle! That and would take a have... whole lot of fun out of the game, I think. But yeah. you can you can petition Notch for it. I hear they take a lot of fan feedback. Last question, L Bubbly Dingus, whose question I am asking solely because of how awesome his username is. How do I make the pain stop? It won't go away no matter what I try to do. Yep. Um, try using some Bengay and then getting off Twitter, because that usually makes stop, the pain go stop right stop away. Pinching it so yeah. hard, it's terrible. Yeah. So that's Minecraft, really. Um, if you guys have any other questions that I didn't address, then feel free to ask them on my Twitter. I'm going to plug that later in the show. Also, if you prefer reading reviews to watching, since I know some of you guys do, uh, go read Jim Sterling's review on Destructoid.com. He gave it a 7.5 out of 10, and he is completely new to the series, so he's got an interesting perspective on it. Also, like I said earlier, you guys can check out our full review on YouTube.com slash Rev3Games. 
What else can they find there, Max? Well, uh, Mr. Anthony Carboni was actually nice enough to put together a little video where he just runs off all the interesting stuff that we've done on there in the Great. past week, and we're gonna just have a little annotation, so you, you can you can just click that. Couldn't be more perfect. Uh, and it. it there's a lot of stuff we did, a lot of cool stuff, and you can kind of choose your own adventure from there. I personally recommend you check out Casual Friday. That is a thing we do every week, and we shoot it on Wednesdays, and it usually goes up on Thursday night, but for some reason we still call it Casual Friday. Because it's so casual. It's very casual. Even the use of Friday is casual. It's me and Tara and Anthony sitting around drinking beer and just talking about video games yeah. like we do. Um, as always, you can follow us on Twitter. The show's official feed is at Detoid Show. Uh, you don't actually type in the at, but uh, you know it's just the Detroit show. Is there anyone there? And I'm I'm Max Scoville, and Tara is Tara Longest, and we put our thoughts there, and the internet, and that is our show today. You wanna go to Minecraft Day with me? Uh, will there be yeah. blocks? Yeah, blocks. I'll see you guys on Wednesday.